Welcome back to Wake Up WA. Now, if you're like me, and I'm sure many of you sitting at home, we love Western Australia. It is such a beautiful state from our beautiful coastlines to our hills as well. Now, I have family that live up in Kalamunda there in Pickering Brook, and it's absolutely beautiful driving up there to visit, and it's just so relaxing. The pristine beauty up there is just something that needs to be kept. Fortunately, Western Power have got a different idea, and they're planning what they have proposed is an eastern terminal substation that they want to build all in the hills there and um, possibly destroy it and lose that beauty. But to tell us all about it and what we can do to help and stop it, we have Gary and Tony Warden here. Welcome to Wake Up WA. Thanks for having us. Now, I am very passionate about this because I do have family. It is beautiful because I drive up there quite a bit. Can you tell us a little bit about what this proposal is and um, what it is actually going to do? Well, um, for some time now, Western Power has been uh, proposing the, the development of a, a terminal substation up in the Hills area. Now, uh, people may not know what a terminal substation right. is, but basically it's a, a fairly large site, uh, up to about 20 hectares of land required for it, with transformers and, uh, and uh, power tr transmission line, large towers. And we've got a photo of one there on the mm. screen at the moment, uh, quite a large amount of space required for the Ugly. construction of it. Mm. Um, but um, you know, it's designed to connect uh, the metropolitan area, which is the main demand centre, with the main power generation area down in Collie down south. And our big concern really is where they're proposing to put it, which is really up in the, uh, the Hills Forest, the State Forest, which doesn't belong to you know, Tony or I or anybody else in particular. It belongs to everybody. It's called State Forest for a reason. It belongs mm. to all West Australians. Um, the area that they're looking at is, uh, or the pr Western Power's preferred area is in Hackett's Gully, and we've got a photo of what the forest looks like in Hackett's Gully. It's beautiful, pristine bushland. Anybody mm. who, uh, who goes up there regularly uh, you know, would be familiar with this sort of area. Uh, it's just a beautiful landscape. Uh, it's already at serious risk from things like dieback, and so the uh, prospect of bringing in a major project like this is just uh, terrible. It's not just the, the uh, substation itself that is of a concern, though. It's the, um, all of the, the power lines that radiate out from the substation itself as well. We've got another photo of a um, substation which is in the eastern states in New South Wales. Um, and you can see the, the oh, substation which is in the middle there. And you can see these sort of, it's like a spider web of power lines just radiating out from uh, the substation site itself. So it's quite devastating. Uh, to the uh, natural environment. So you're talking about 20 hectares of substation. Mm. That looks like a lot more than 20 hectare, hectares. Well, yeah, there. and w when you add up the, um, the total amount of land, including the, pa the, the clearing for the power transmission lines, we're talking more like about 600 hectares. Wow. Mm. Well, that's a nice round figure because that happens to coincide with the area of the world's largest uh, park in a, in a, in a city. Mm. Do you know what I'm talking about? King's Park. King's Park, <laughs> 600 hectares. So you're basically taking an area the size of King's Park and going mm. Mm. Now, not terribly many people obviously get in a plane and fly over the top of the Kalamunda Hills in all fairness. So what will the visual reality be like at ground level? What's the impact going... What, 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 let, let's not even talk visual. What's the impact going to be on local residents? Well, um, local residents, um, you know, we're, we're expecting to see a lot more transmission lines coming over all our houses. The biggest impact um, for us and danger is the fire threat. Um, Western Power don't have a good track record. They've actually been responsible for several people's deaths when it comes to fire. Um, and recently we've had um, fires in uh, Parkerville and Stoneville that have caused major, major damage. Um, so we're looking at the fire threat. But also, um, you know, th this is an area what's in called the Southwest Eco Region, which is a globally a global recognised biodiversity hotspot, which mm. is critically endangered. Only 7% of the forest um, in Western Australia actually remains intact. Now, look, I always like to play devil's advocate and I like to jump from one side of the argument to the other. So a second mm. ago, I was sort of saying, oh, well, no one's going to mm. see it. Mm. Let's flip it to the other side for a second. Mm. Now, I've been to Collie, mm. not a very attractive part of the world. And mm. in fact, there's vast areas of cleared land mm. where it could quite easily put a substation, which would probably mm. look better than the, mm. the, 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 than the, the mine that's just left. I've got a little bit of an inkling in the back of my head that maybe they want the power up here because they want to put more things that need power up here. Would there be any truth in that or am I being a little bit paranoid? No. Well, I mean, that is uh, one of the concerns is that uh, one of the justifications for building a substation is to allow uh, major industrial expansion uh, in the it's east of the Perth Hills. And uh, it, it is true to say that one concern that we have is this is just the thin end of the ed edge of the wedge and it will allow... Uh, much more uh, industrial development in the Hills Forest and so the 600 hectares will be just the start. We know that uh, mining companies have tenements for uh, bauxite mining 
uh, near Mandarin Weir. Mm. And so well, I, I think that is a significant risk that once the substation's in place, the infrastructure is in place, there's really no longer any... They'll you know, say, well, we built the substation, uh, we should use it. Well, exactly <laughs> right. Yeah. Now, is there any physical electronic yeah. engineering reason why this substation couldn't be closer to the uh, coal-fired plants in Collie and then just have a great big... Mm. A cable that brings it up to us. Mm. Well, that, that's what they're proposing. They're actually trying to um, bring the power up to, up through the southwest, um, and this area goes through pristine forest. And uh, you're looking at another 500 hectares of clearing just to get the line up to to Perth. Mm. Then, you know, establishing the eastern terminal um, will mean that uh, it, they're telling us it, it can only go in this this area. Yet. We've spoken to them about this and they've said that it actually, there are other areas it can go, like on industrial land along Road Highway and things like that, but we're always curious why they keep coming back to the state forest. You know, there's, uh, as Gary... Well, we know why they keep coming back. It's cheap. Question? It is. Yeah. It, there's okay. no doubt. It's, it's because it's, there is no value whatsoever placed on forest. It's, you know, basically free from their point of view. Um, no, no cost to cutting down a tree, and uh, and so that's why it always comes up as the cheapest option. But is there other alternatives, yeah. though? Well, there there are, we'll and, and Western Power Zone representatives have um, have have uh, agreed that there are technically feasible sites down in um, industrial area near the near the airport there. So. Well, that seems like a pretty. We, we've got some well, good friends in, in in Parliament, haven't we? Good, good, morning. good morning, Senator Matthias Corson. Um, he'll um, he'll look after you. But also <laughs> people like Tony Greenwood from mm. uh, the Pure Development Commission mm. who are. Yeah. Uh, massively opposed to taking mm. away our trees and things. Mm. Now, mm. as a Western Australian, I'll put my hand up as saying, if I had to reach into my pocket and fork out two bucks, let's say, that'll, mm. give, you no, that'll give them an extra four and a half million bucks if <laughs> yeah. everyone in WA did Absolutely, it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and we're not talking about anywhere near that amount of money. Yeah. But what I'm saying yeah. is, like, yeah. I would much rather see this down yeah. on a row highway where yeah. it's already ugly. Right? That's right. Um, yeah. Now, I spoke before about residents. I yeah. am one person who can put my hand up and say, I do get up to the hills and go for a bit mm. of a walk through mm. the bush every now and then, and yeah. it's, it's really nice just to mm. for it to be there. Yeah. That's right. For them to say there's, or for, mm. the, for the implied suggestion to be that there's no numerical value to that bushland mm. is absolutely ridiculous. Mm. Mm. And in a day and age where people are having to plant trees in order to run a business, now mm. my understanding of the whole carbon trading scheme mm. would suggest mm. that to build that particular mm. facility, mm. they would then have to go and plant 200,000 trees yeah. mm. to yes. offset the cost of, right. you know, to the environment of building it, right. plus the trees that they chop down. That's right. right. And yeah. I'm guessing that the government mm. proposal would say 20 hectares. It probably wouldn't mention over 1,000 hectares that we're no, now coming it has, to. No, that's right. No. It's, they've kept it very quiet. Mm. The other thing is this is priority one water catchment area. And... You know, the, the, the government policies state that you can't even put a childcare centre in that area. But for some reason, Western Power believe they can get this through. So we have How to... How close did this come to happening without yeah. anyone saying anything? Very close. They, um, they almost had it in, but the community, once they sat down and realised what was going on, caused a huge stink. Because how many people? It's about 50,000, is it, in the, in the area? Well, uh, yeah, there was 50,000, but only 900 people were told about what they'd planned to do. Um, <gasps> So we, we quickly formed the um, Stop the Eastern Terminal substation group and we managed to get them to go back and go back to the drawing board and mm. actually get more of the community involved because they clearly tried to slip it in without letting anyone know <laughs> what the impacts are going to be. So then what can other pe you know, people outside the community like me and, and Jason, what can we do mm. to um, help? Will we well, plenty. I mean, we really... We, we need people to, I guess, express their opinions about what Western Power are planning to do with their state forest. Um, mm. You know, um, the, uh, the action group, Stop the, Stop the Eastern Terminal Action Group, and we've got the website uh, up on the screen, um, has a, a terrific website. Unfortunately, we don't actually see the, uh, the, the URL there, but if you can um, Google Eastern Terminal, you'll find it fairly quickly. And uh, Western Power are in the process of requesting submissions from the public on the proposed site selection process. And so there is an opportunity for people to uh, let, let Western Power know that they don't think it's OK for us to be cutting trees down mm. uh, to be placing an electrical substation there. Uh, we've got a, uh, an online letter wizard which makes it really easy for people to...